The simple form tutorial will show you how to create a simple form and capture the data entered in the HTML form in a second HTML page. So we will look at two HTML pages, the simple form, which has the form shown here, and then we'll also look at a second page, simple receive, that displays the data that's captured in the form. First, let's look at how forms are designed here down in simple form. A form uses begin and end form tags. The form is named, can be named how you want. An action is specified that says what page you will call when the form is completed or the person clicks on the submit button. And then the method equals get is one of two is just sort of the easier of the methods to transfer the data to the new page. So that's the definition of the form as a whole. Within the form, we can have as many input fields as we want. So you can see in this example, it says first name colon, and then there's a box for a person to type the first name. That's set up here. We have the text first name colon, followed by the input tag. And so the input tag has a type, meaning text, if you want text input, and a name, in this case, first name. And that first name is kind of a variable name where we'll store the results that the person types in. The text I put here before the input tag is just text I want displayed to help the person read my form. I've included a break here because uh, to have each of my fields set on a separate line. But you can embed these input tags within any other HTML tags to achieve the look and feel that you want. So if the form was complex and had lots of fields, I might put the input tags within a table and the table help line things up well. But this is just kind of a simplified example. Note that the input here is text type. I also have input radio here. So if you want a radio button, the type would be radio. And the name of that button you can see is sex and value is male or I have a second radio button is female. So because both of the two radio buttons have the same name, that ties them together into a radio button set where only one can be selected. And then the, the value that will be entered is what's here in the double quotes. And again, the text in the middle of the tag or after the input tag is just text to display on the screen and really can be anything you want. And then finally, we have an input type submit. The input type submit creates a submit button. And it will basically it'll gather all the information typed in and send it to the simple receive HTML specified in the action of the form as a whole. Now this is just we've demonstrated three types of inputs. You can look for a reference on HTML forms and see that there are other types of reference as well. But this example just sticks to these three. Let's go up into the top window and see how it works. I can type Ken into the first name, hit the tab key, type Walsh, select mail, and then I can select submit. When I select submit, it'll bring up my uh, simple receive HTML. And let's look what I did with the simple receive HTML. The first thing is this text string here is the text string that is sent um, from one HTML file to another HTML file when you submit a form. So you can see the data is paired, the name, I gave a field, first name, with an equal sign and the value entered by the user into that field, first name equals Ken. So that string is what's sent to the receiving 
HTML page, but you might note that that string is a little difficult to uh, work with. We don't want just that whole string. We want to print out the name. So we want to print out things like this. The first name parameter contains Ken and just print out the word Ken wherever we want on the page. Let me show you simple receive and how that's accomplished. And if we look, let's first look at the body section of simple receive. <clears throat> the first thing I do is execute a function called get params. And I store the results of that in a variable called page params. The exact way get params works is a little beyond the scope of this tutorial, but we'll use this variable page params. Okay. Uh, so I write with an H2 tag, submission is received, and then the line with the question mark is written to the screen with this document write. So this document write is, uh, writes um, out this document.location.search. So document.location.search, that's part of our document object model or DOM. And the document.location search has that full, what's called a search string that is submitted to this file. Then what I do down here is to access just one variable. I jump down here where it says the first name contains, I use my document right. And now I print out page params dot first name anywhere in my document within a JavaScript section of my document. I can use page params dot in any one of those variables. So I have page params dot first name, page params dot last name, and page params dot sex for the, to get the values of those three variables. And that's simply how I put the first name parameter contains Ken. Couple things to note. The word page params is just an arbitrary word that I used up here when I said parade page params equals get params. And so I could have named it whatever I wanted, but that's how that value is set. And then the values of the particular variables are set based on what they were in the simple form page that sent that information here. And that's really the extent of what this tutorial was supposed to explain. But let me just go up to the head section of this HTML file and you'll see the function get params is defined here. So this particular function is a little beyond uh, the scope, but the purpose of get params is to take that initial long string that began with the question mark and pull it apart into the pieces so that we can use them individually. And so that's something you can look at uh, if you want, or uh, you can copy and use as you want. But I won't explain it all here. I'll just stop with the basic form and the use here of a variable from the form. Thanks.